everyone. Welcome to the Manchester's team workshop on essential entrepreneurship. My name is Maddie and this is my colleague Ivan. In this workshop, we're going to teach you guys methods to help you ensure that your iGEM project would be a good biotechnological enterprise. And the idea is that the skills and methods we teach you, you guys can perform yourself. And this will help you to decide if a startup would be a good made for your team. So what is an enterprise? An enterprise is the application of creative ideas and innovations to practical situations, problems. This directly applies to iGEM. Under the iGEM umbrella, your project is your way of solving consumers' problems in novel ways. Therefore, having the basic entrepreneurship skills will be useful, and you could use these methods we showed you today to create a convincing market report to accompany your human practices or help you prepare for creating startups in the future. All of these huge companies such as Ginkgo Bioworks and OpenTrons began as um, iGEM project startups that have grown into um, very successful businesses. The skills taught in this webinar and the resources from the starting form the starting points for an entrepreneurship journey that will help you grow your project. Entrepreneurship helps you think in a logical way and make less risky decision, a skill that can be applied anywhere. So just very quickly, these skills have been extremely helpful for us and that's why we felt it was important to share them. From doing these tasks ourselves, we've been able to ensure that our product is useful to the community based on consumer expectations from similar projects. We've gained a very clear description of the market and we've learned how to identify key factors that will influence that market and therefore the demand for our project. We also learned how to identify what could go wrong and implement strategies to perfect this and to back up all of our claims with sufficient evidence. And the big value that we got from this is a really in-depth understanding of community values and what the data and market reports are actually telling you because it's not immediately obvious when you read the data. In this webinar, we're just gonna take you through some key sections of our essential entrepreneurship resource. The rest of the information will be available, the resource itself. It's seven short modules that go into a lot more information than we're gonna give you today. And if you complete it, you get a nice little ribbon that you can put on your wiki to indicate that you've engaged with this information. If anyone's looking for the entrepreneurship prize, that would be extremely helpful. So we'll get started then. It is important to realize that not all inventions are suitable for a startup. And so before you even begin considering the internal strengths and weaknesses of your project, you need to ask yourself these questions. Would I put all my money and effort into my startup? Do I have enough support? What is the end goal of my startup? And the most important question that you're going to ask yourself is this one. Would I put all my money and my effort into a startup? The aim of a business is to be successful and have good customers, but in order to do that, you need to first have good investors. And this little Ford experiment can help you determine if your project is attractive. If you wouldn't put your own money into your project, you can't expect other people to. So we're gonna help you decide if you would invest in your project and teach you how to persuade investors as well. Uh, to, in order to do this, you need a good proof of concept, such as a working prototype intellectual property rights to the project. You need a good strong business report and a business plan to help you predict the early success of your startup. Intellectual property should be secured as soon as possible because a public disclosure might prevent one from securing the intellectual property to be disclosed. The main purpose of an intellectual property is to protect your company from being taken advantage of by competitors willing to mislead, your, mislead consumers into buying their products by making their products resemble yours, for instance, using a very similar logo or name, or to copy your technology instead of going through a laborious process of um, inventing their own products like you do. It should also be noted that regulations vary from country to country and some rights to intellectual property are not permanent. For instance, patents don't last forever. So it's very important to make sure you get the intellectual property early in your startup. Yeah, and you should also remember that essentially you can protect your function 
your appear, appearance of your product, your brand. And there are also limitations. For instance, you cannot um, patent some things that you discover, such as a protein, because we suggest it's already in nature. You haven't invented it. And you cannot patent some immoral technologies, such as transgenic animals with mutations that can make them suffer for um, disease models, for instance. After you've done that, the next thing you want to do is to create a value proposition. So a value proposition is a promise of values to be delivered, communicated and acknowledged in your product. But it's also a customer belief about how their values are going to be experienced when engaging with your project. And what this all kind of boils down to is how do you make your project attractive to customers? When producing your value proposition, you need to obtain information about the consumer's preferences. What do they want from your project? What has previous projects done wrong? And how did that violate the value of the consumer? The positive aspects that the consumers want will be labeled gains. And the aspects of your project that emphasize these are called gain creators. The negative aspects that consumers want to avoid are called pains. And you should actively design your project to alleviate these concerns, and these will be called pain relievers. So this template is just a potential one that you could use for your value proposition. It should be based on your customer profile and provides a visual aid to explain the strongest aspects of your project. For example, um, one customer pain might be that the production method for a certain type of project is really damaging to the ecosystem. So an example of a good game creator would be an alternative biofabric that is better for the environment. So Benchling is a product of a former IGM, IGM startup which grew into a huge international company. Benchling designs software for sciences to allow faster and easier sharing of data and experiments. You might be using it yourself. The Benchling team aligned their project values with consumer values very early and they still display them on their opening page of website. They ensure that um, their customer values are always driving their decisions. So they take less risk when they carry out any decisions. And they also try not to, and the reason why they're successful is because they do their best not to violate the values of their consumers. So our advice is take time when you, cho when you choose how to um, when you choose your value proposition, because you need to consider and prioritize, prioritize your value proposition in every decision you make. This also partly reflects human practices where you need to incorporate what you hear from consumers or customers. So, so another example of where this was done really well was by the San Diego team and their project Epinoma. They combined entrepreneurship with human practices and conducted in-depth stakeholder interviews. Stakeholders are people with an interest or a concern in your to-be project and the opinions of your most powerful stakeholders, your customers, are going to help define your project in the early stages. This team interviewed cancer patients, healthcare professionals and investors to ensure their project aligned with their stakeholder values. And from this, they crafted a need statement. This is a full list of what their project needed to do in order to fulfill their values. So our advice is interview potential customers, find out firsthand what their concerns are and use this to guide your value proposition. You really wanna focus on the first 100 customers because if you can satisfy them, then your startup is likely to be successful. So there is a major difference between market and marketing research. These terms are not interchangeable and it's important to you to understand why because um, it might lead to some confusion when you're doing your pitches. For instance, market research specifically refers to the characterization of the market such as market is growing, market is ex it's decreasing. So the market is defined as an arena or area in which con commercial dealings are conducted and there are different markets of the same product. For example, the UK agricultural GMO market will be different to Taiwan agricultural GMO market. Market research involves characterization of such key trends, segmentation of consumers, and analyzing competitors. If you access 
if access our full resource, we will go through how to conduct this analysis in greater detail. But today we will focus on analyzing competitors. Before you can start analyzing your competitors, you need to be clear how you divide them and how you identify them. So competitors can be direct or indirect. For example, two companies making ELISA assay are in a direct competition with each other. While both of these ELISA companies are in a direct, comp in a direct competition with um, Western Blood comp company, all these competitors target research teams that want to identify proteins, for instance. Similarly, agent teams trying to design a safer pro production method for medicine will be in indirect competition with um, non synth bio based pharmacology companies. An indirect competition is between companies that make slightly different products but target the same customer, same needs. But the table is simple format that you need to follow when comparing your project to what of your competitors. In doing this, you might identify strengths or weaknesses in your competitors that widely impact your project design or experimental procedure. This is the simplest form to recommend to do this, but how you choose to present it is up to you. This was the exact format used by 2019 Cop Copenhagen team when analyzing competitors to their project overlaid. The idea that there will be a completely ideal market is a myth. No market will ever be perfect for you because there will always be, be, be too many impacting factors. But a good market, one you could successfully in, will have these characteristics. A highly segmented market with lots of demand. This means so your project is going to be desirable to a lot of different people. A factor driving the demand for be what your agent project is trying to solve. Accessible segments, meaning your project can actually reach the people who need it. You need to differentiate yourself from competitors so you can offer a unique selling point. This is where the table is previously show, shown will be very helpful. Your unique selling point would mean you have identified the market, but for us substitutes that could replace your project. So after you've done this, you've got a good idea of what you want your project to look like and what kind of market you're aiming for. You can then start to forecast your markets with pest analysis. So pest analysis identifies the external forces, kind of the ones out of your control that dictate the market as a whole, and they decide the parameters in which your project can exist. Pest analysis also determines the flexibility your iGEM team has in terms of creating a successful startup. So when conducting a pest analysis, you are aiming to identify all the political, economic, social, and technological factors which impact your project. So we're gonna talk about these a little bit more. Political factors are anything government or regulation related. For example, in the EU, GMO regulations are different to the GMO regulations in the US. Economic factors are anything related to finance, such as the growth of disposable income means people will be more likely to use synthetic biology products, even if they cost a little more. Social factors relate to society specifically, and these are a little more complicated and require more thought. So one example of a social factor would be increased environmental consciousness. This will mean that more eco-friendly synthetic bioproducts are more likely to be successful to products that are not so eco-conscious. Technological factors are any novel innovations. For example, the effect of cheaper sequencing on the ability to implement symbio solutions. I do want to point out if you get really into this analysis, you enjoy it a lot, or you just feel that you need a little bit more, you can extend it to a pestor analysis. And this includes environmental and legal factors, such as climate change and distribution laws. However, these are not as likely to be important for your iGEM project, which is why we haven't gone into it that much. But if you are working in the environmental track, extending that pest to pest analysis might be more useful. There are things that you have to consider while you do this. Um, information collection, where did it come from? How is it biased? 
the timeframes of the trends, the magnitude of the trends, who your stakeholders are, and what impact will those trends have on the market. An ideal product ideally would have well-processed information, meaningful, long-lasting trends, and involve loads of stakeholders and have a large impact on the market. Best analysis allows you to forecast markets, including financial predictions. When the 2019 Copenhagen team decided to make financial predictions for the first 10 years of business, we advise against this and suggest focusing on predictions for the first six, two years. No one really knows what will happen to the market. For instance, black swan events such as COVID-19 might occur. And predictions are likely to become less valid the longer we go and therefore they're going to become more abstract. It's important to note that the Copenhagen team backed their financial prediction up with a lot of market research and professional advice. If your team does not have access to this much information with, when predicting long-term financial trends becomes even more complicated. Okay, now after this, the next thing you're going to do is called a SWOT analysis and this helps you identify potential commercial issues in your project. It has a similar setup to pest analysis and it determines the likelihood of your startup becoming successful given both the internal and the external forces. So the internal forces are the strengths and weaknesses of your project. Most of the strengths will likely be taken from the pain relievers and gain creators section of your value proposition. Uh, while the weaknesses are potential issues based on your specific situation. One weakness might be a general skepticism from the public about synthetic biology, and that's going to challenge how they perceive your project. Uh, threats and opportunities are external factors that impact your success beyond your competitors. So opportunities are changes in the global market which aid your project. For example, Increased environmental consciousness will increase interest in biofuel. Threats are the direct opposite of this. They're things within the market that actively disrupt your project. So increased interest in biofuel would reduce demand for conventional fuel, damaging conventional fuel companies. Now, each of these categories, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, have certain criteria they have to meet. Your strengths must be valuable, rare, and immittable, meaning it cannot easily be replaced by competitors. Your weaknesses have to be meaningful, uncommon, difficult to fix, and uncompensated, so it's not going to be fixed by something else. Your opportunities need to complement your project, need to be big enough, accessible, and lasting enough to even make an impact in those first six months to two years of your startup. Threats are unmitigated, significant, undefended, and lasting. And with all of this, you gotta bear in mind your time as well. Where did that information come from? And really how big these factors are. You don't wanna waste time writing all this stuff down if it's not gonna make a sustained impact on your project. After completing your market research, you need to test the assumptions. Oh, sorry. After doing this, you perform a TALS analysis. Yeah, I, was, I got a bit ahead of myself. <laughs> perform a TALS analysis, and this is basically the opposite of SWOT. But instead of identifying factors that impact your project, you design actions that you can take, take um, to solve the problems or to capitalize on opportunities you identified in SWOT. TALS is about deciding what opportunities you're going to take and how and how you're going to get around your threats and weaknesses. So once you already completed your research, you need to test your assumptions. And assumption testing involves gathering evidence around your ideas, for instance, testing whether your value proposition is actually backed up by evidences rather than by your just theories or from literature reviews. So there are many ways to do to do your um, assumption testing, but we are going to focus on A-B testing and crystallizing your value proposition. When creating content relevant to AGM, such as general public description and wiki pages, it can be tempting to use your, um, 
intuition to predict what will make people click and engage with your page. But based on market decisions of feeling is subjective and detrimental to results, performing A-B tests can be valuable because different people will behave differently. And you want to aim to produce, to produce behavior that brings the most people to your projects. So A-B testing is, can be quite familiar to you because it's similar to what you do in biology. You just change one variable and then run statistical tests to compare the difference between them based on the react where the dependent variable would be the reaction of your population or whatever you choose. Another method is to crystallize your value proposition assumptions by looking to see what evidence you have to support your claims. It should be noted that um, assumptions can be tested using tests mentioned previously, such as uh, A-B testing. So you need to review your answers in a value proposition and label which answer is fact or assumption. Assumption is something you don't have evidence for yet. Um, so for facts, you already have evidences that you need, that you can rely on. For examples, you might ask, will um, certain communication of your project be received better by public? Or do people actually care about the problems your project tries to solve? Okay, so very quick, very short. Thank you guys for attending. I hope you found it useful. Like I said, we're planning to release a full entrepreneurship resource that will be seven modules long, goes into a lot more information. There's a lot more methods, different types of analysis that we teach you. Um, and basically it'd be really useful to help you decide if a startup is a good process for your team. If you think it is, then we also recommend checking out iGEM's new course, EPIC. This expands the learning in this webinar and the resource and introduces alternative methods to the one that we can produce. Uh, the resource should be releasing very soon. We're waiting for final confirmation. And when we release, we're gonna send out a link on our Instagram. So please follow us on Instagram to gain access to that. Like I said, you gain this beautiful ribbon to put on your wiki. So that's always a plus. Um, we've got a little bit of time, so I'm gonna stop the share and we can open up to questions if anyone has any. If not, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you guys for coming. Let's see if anyone has any questions. I hope it's because we've been very clear with what we've been saying, rather than highly unclear and you're very confused and don't yeah, understand anything we means. say. That means that I did a really great job. <laughs> well, we hope so. But if you but if you have some issues or want some clarification, feel free to even ask us or to type it in Q&A, because in Q&A you can do it anonymously. Well, maybe I should ask you a question. What, what was actually interesting to you in this resource and what attracted you to this in the first place? Um, I think I will say that the best thing about this resource and the methods that we've chosen is it gives you a really wide breadth. Like I'm a biology major, major. I've never done business in my life never even heard of pest analysis or things like that and I've learned a lot really quickly and it definitely helped me think in a more entrepreneurial way I feel like I'm much better at describing our project now and I can talk about it in a way that's going to be appealing to most people so that was definitely really really useful um, and uh, obviously iGEM have their own epic course coming out, so they're pushing for people to learn about this. Um, so yeah, that was, that was my biggest thing I got from it. What about you, Ivan? Uh, roughly the same. Does anyone from our attendees want to answer? Oh, I'm gonna force people to do that. <laughs> well, we only have one attendee West, the bravest one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more has just joined in. 
Okay, well, I don't think we're going to get any questions. So. Well, I'll, I'll just wait for a bit because I think it's going to be stopped at in three minutes anyway. Okay. Oh, yeah, we can wait. Oh, they go to chat. Oh, okay. It was a comment. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed good. it. Yeah, it feels good to be appreciated. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we can end this. Uh, I don't three, think we're gonna get any questions and uh, there's only minutes. three minutes left. But I think we are going to cut it out in three minutes again anyway, so there is no point of leaving because it will automatically stop. Oh, by the way, we are also open to potential collaborations in terms of entrepreneurship. If you feel that um, you, you have something in mind or you would need our help, for instance, with access to databases or um, with some guidance on what statistical tests to use or um, what databases. I'm just going to pop our contact details back up. So if anyone does want to contact us, they can. I'd also like to point out that if you don't have access to okay. marketing, we can help with that. Okay, Bram, what, what do you want to ask us? Oh, you can find it on an iGEM website. So you go to, yeah, you go to the website and when through scrolling sections, you would see entrepreneurship and this is why I have a link. Not exactly Yeah, if you sure. just type in Epic, igem.org it will come up it's very easy to find i don't think that was your fault they we recently had a meeting with them and they hadn't uploaded it fully yet so that might be why you struggled to find it yeah, additionally you should remember we've only started doing it this year so it's very new for them and for you and also we don't really have much resources there because primarily we share the resources for people who want to do startup after iGEM. So once we're already, for instance, proven the concept. So it's mostly from closed share rather than open, but we're thinking of making it more open. Okay. All right. So it's half free. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck with the rest of your iGEM projects. Bye. Bye. <laughs>